what's up everybody if you think i look a little bit weird for a duck hunting video you're right it's because the season's over and uh i'm actually out here fishing right there got the rods um got two today uh but uh thought it'd be a good time to practice some calling um you know uh this is the off season a lot of guys like me switch over to fishing um do something different work on the yard stuff like that um but uh it's also a good time to practice your calling it, it really is um a lot of us don't pick up the call until right before season. I'm guilty of that, especially for geese. Um, that's a bad habit of mine, but we really shouldn't because, uh, you know, we spend a lot of money on these calls and we spend a lot of time and money on, uh, on uh, hunting, so we should practice. So last time we did a video on beginner calls, right? $20 cheap, cheap calls that you can buy from Walmart. Um, the thing is, they're good. They're really good for the money. However, I don't run them. I don't run them because I'm looking for something a little bit more than what they have to offer. Uh, what's that mean? Um, does that mean that I kill more ducks with them? Uh, maybe. Sometimes Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does matter. Sometimes the ducks don't care. <laughs> Gosh dang, that was crazy! Right in the face! Boy, go rock! What? <laughs> I'll go get he, it. He Marvin. did that. He goes to his. Yeah. He goes to his. I'll go get it. Don't walk too much of him. Good! Hey, yeah. good boy! Hey, hey, man, hey, that's enough. Good boy. You got the bird, look! Look, you got the bird, yeah! Yeah, Pete. Beautiful. Simeon Children. That is the uh, prize of California in the western states. Right there. They don't taste that good, but uh, you know, that's uh, so people come here to California to shoot. So. I think it can make them edible. Oh, absolutely. Let's continue some more beginner basics. Let's go with the whistle. Now the whistle is a call that everybody should have. I've got three of them actually. I've got two of this type, which is your, what they call the six in one whistle, essentially a regular referee whistle. So it's the same as a referee whistle, just with the end opened up. See that, kind of like a trumpet, magnify the sound. This is probably the most important call you can have in the public refuge. Why? Well, because uh, everybody likes to run that uh, mallard call, and uh, for good reason. You know, everyone hunts mallards. They like mallards are good tasting. Um, I like I like hunting and eating mallards too, and they like to watch and uh, and you know see the complete picture. But this call will kill you more ducks than uh, probably, well, I'll say almost every other duck call out there. Um, this guy, what we usually use it for is for the whistling ducks. Uh, most ducks don't actually quack. Uh, most ducks make some version of a whistle. So teal, teal will be out there. You'll hear them. They're the smallest ducks. They taste great. Um, you've probably shot them by now, especially, I mean, for you beginners who haven't shot them yet, um, you'll get them. Easily enough, everybody knows the peep. Yeah, everybody knows that. Single sharp blast. It's supposed to mimic a teal. If you've ever heard a teal out there, they sound more kind of like this. I'm kind of rolling my R. Um, some people do it with the back of the throat and go <laughs> instead of <laughs> so they can go <laughs> but I go <laughs> um, usually I hear teal they do twos or threes so or now the thing with the teal is that um, a lot of folks claim they don't decoy and they don't come into calls. They do. They absolutely do. They come into calls just like any other duck. And in fact, uh, they may be one of the most common ducks to get to come actually land in your spread. I've seen that, uh, you know, uh, that was one of the first things that I saw when I started hunting as a, as a first timer out there.
one thing you can do with this call, there's some, you know, um, there's some intricacies. People say that, that ducks won't shy away from this call, that uh, you can't spook them with the whistle. That's not true. About December, when you start getting those migrators coming down, you, we start getting those green wing teal out here in the uh, Pacific Flyway, um, they'll become really call shy. You'll, you'll notice it. You'll start to call them. And they'll just, they hear it and they take off in the other direction. They go even faster, flap, flap faster. That's our joke. Um, but when they are responding to calls, usually early in the season or late in the season, um, there's a couple things you can do. You can, you can just get them in, entice them with a single blast. Let's on double. But when they're about to land, this happens a lot. It happens with cinnamons, happens with uh, green wings, and it might be with blue wings too. I don't know, because I haven't had very much uh, experience with blue wings. But when they're about to land farther, like on the other side of the pond from you, just out of shotgun range, you hit them with a succession of blasts, a lot of whistling to get them up and out. That is, that is a, a big tip for folks who haven't done it yet. Um, when they're about to set down somewhere, you don't want them to, just hit it hard. Or, uh, or I like to go. sound like a whole bunch of, of ducks somewhere over here going hey hey we're over here or like or just making noise you know because I don't know if the ducks are actually calling to each other I just know that when they're about to land on the other side you hit that real hard they'll get up they'll flare up off the water then you go back to your get them right in They're dropping down around Frank. I don't know what's going on. The other type of whistle is one like this. A lot of you guys have seen it. It's a two hole whistle. And you can do the same thing with this. The sound is a little bit more refined. You can do you can do a little bit more. It just sounds a little bit nicer. These guys are way easier to run. And folks go, what do you mean it's a whistle? What do you mean it's easier to run? I'll show you in a second here. Uh, with this whistle, let's say we want to call something else like a pintail. All we got to do is cover one hole. Roll an R or, or go. <laughs> Super easy. On this one, they say to cover, put your finger in the hole, and then do the same thing. Problem is, that's not the right sound. Pintail don't sound like that. They sound more like this. Notice the difference? So, how do you get this guy to sound like this? Cover it up halfway. Cover it up about maybe midway. Adjust until you find the right note. See? Way easier. This one's made by my buddy, uh, Tony Anderson of Sweatline Calls. He makes them for me. He's got some out in poly. They sound the same. Um, this one's acrylic just because I wanted to help him out a little bit, but these are awesome. Super easy to blow. Now, another way of calling the pintails this year that we noticed work really well, and you see I've got my duck lanyard on now, um, is uh, this guy. This is just the mallard, uh, the mallard hen call. This is my um, my favorite call, the one that hangs, that is on my lanyard on my right side, right where I can find it. This is a sweatline custom call made by my buddy Tony Anderson. Um, 
This guy, you can't get this one anymore. This is a second edition. Um, he had them running last year. Um, had them sell out as much as he could. Uh, and so, sorry guys, you can't get the same one that, that I've got. He's got a better version now, which I've got right here. I haven't bought it yet. This is uh, the tester. So, uh, he sent me a prototype. This is only on loan, so I don't get to keep it. But um, this guy right here is the new version, new and improved. See the difference? Maybe you'll hear the difference. But anyways, let's go back to the pintail, right? The pintails this year have been really, really running on that feed chuckle, that fast feed chuckle. I mean, we're not talking Main Street chatter, but we're just talking chatter. The pintails, for some reason this year, were super attracted to that noise. And when you hear them fly by, you'll hear the females make that same kind of chatter in the air. So I don't know what it was this year, but they really came down to that. That is a secret. The other call with the with the whistle is the uh, widgeon call. They're the other one that we all know here on the West Coast. Um, we love to shoot these cotton tops. They got that bald uh, plate on their head right there. Uh, they taste great. They decoy awesome. They land in your spread. They're so cool. Um, those, it's a, they're a three call whistle, okay? Um, it's not like a, uh, a, a quail that goes, Chicago. You know, a lot of people make that mistake when they first come out. They, they do a quail call like this. That's a quail. You're, you're putting the emphasis in the middle. The, the widgeon is more like a low high high. Pa, pa, pa. Get that? Same with this guy. So sometimes they do a four. I've heard them flying around the air going. So yeah, um, that's more of a widgeon. Remember, it's really hard to get that quail sound out of your head, okay? So try not to listen to quail calls um, and, and listen to widgeon calls before you, before you get out there. I go a little bit fancier. Sometimes I have this guy on me and I'll, I'll actually mess around with the openings too. Um, heard a guy, he, he blocks the front to make it sound a little bit more hollow. I don't know how much that matters or not. I don't know if, if what it does exactly, but we'll try it. So, yeah, what I'm basically trying to do is, you know, if you don't get the tone perfect, if it's not as high pitch as this, that's okay. Um, ducks all sound kind of different. What matters is that rhythm that, that you get. You hear, I can sometimes go faster, or I can go slower. So, that sounds like a couple ducks on the water, um, hopefully making it a little bit more attractive. He's dead. That guy's so dead. This guy is my favorite call so far. I got this as a gift from my cousin. Um, you know, I thank him for it. Uh, it was awesome. Um, and uh, my, I, it wasn't my first acrylic call, but it was the first one that I could do everything with. And uh, what I mean by everything is, we could do, uh, with this call, you know, I could get in my squeals, my Cajun squeals, I can get in um, the hiccups, I can get in whatever I wanted to. Uh, this call could do it, right? So let's just run it for a little bit here. <laughs> Now, 
that's a secret of mine right there. Is here how I went real low. I killed a drake this year doing exactly that. It was off to my left a little bit, too close to make too much noise. All I did was to go. He lined up right above my mojo, flapped above, was about to drop down, and pluck, came right out of the sky. I mean, like, you couldn't have asked for anything better than that. But yeah, this is my favorite call because I can get from real high. Hailing them way out, which I honestly, I don't use that often, but if they're way out there and you don't give them a call, you know, you may never know. Um, I feel like I've actually had it work every once in a while. So with that, you know, and, and all you're looking for is a reaction. All you're looking for is just a reaction. So I can get from that, from down to and so that's why I have this call because I can cut down on having so many calls on my lanyard. This, this is kind of ornamental. I don't really go out with all this right here. It, it clutters up. Um, it's, it's a little bit too much. I refine it when the time comes, especially during to, according to what ducks are here, what geese may be here. That's my call. This is my favorite call. His new call, his new call, you guys, um, is pretty damn freaking awesome. Let me compare it to another one of his calls. He actually threw this in my car window one day when I saw him on the street. So um, really cool guy. He'll, uh, you know, uh, his products, he stands by them. Um, if you need help tuning them, if you need help, uh, if you live locally, he'll meet up with you. If you see him in the sweat line with you, you know, he'll fix your calls or whatever, replace your, your, your corks. Um, but this is what he threw to me. I played around with it until I liked it. That was what he didn't like. He didn't like this call actually. I could see why he didn't like it. This is the call that's been perfected. And this guy's is awesome. Check it out. Honestly, you will sound way better than I will on this. Best part about this guy is that it's only gonna be 50 bucks. Literally. He's not done with it. This is still in prototype mode. I'm not supposed to uh, show it and I'm not supposed to actually um, be losing it because the rest of them are gonna be made from the mold of this one. So if you buy one, uh, it's gonna be the exact copy of this guy. Zero mold lines, guys. This thing is freaking sweet. <coughs> That thing is money. That thing is so money. So, Sweatline Custom Calls, guys. If you're wondering what I'm running, that's what I'm running right there. Um, like the guy, support a local guy, real guy. Um, hey man, what are you gonna do? Throw your money away to these guys out there and who knows what state, you know, no, doing whatever. I, I have no idea who they are. You know, I can't call them up on the phone um, and uh, get them to fix my, you know, fix my band or something like that. Nope, um, this is a real guy. Um, his, this one right here, the band hydraulically pressed in. So this will never come off. Um, inside, see something cool? O-ring, um, that means uh, if you run one lanyard, you should be pretty much safe because they won't be coming out. And this is a hydraulic O-ring. So um, it has been, it's made to last. Uh, won't be coming out on you anytime soon. Check them out guys, this is my favorite call. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope that helped a little bit. Um, let me know if you want to see some more examples of, uh, of duck calling because um, it's something that's hard to do and it's hard to explain unless you're right there. You can see it happen. You can see it. Uh, and it's, it's something that's hard to explain unless you're right there. So if you don't have a duck hunting mentor, keep trying at it. Uh, remember, just focus, watch the ducks. The ducks will tell you everything about, about what they want, um, whether they want no calling that day, which has happened, whether they want no spinners that day, which has happened 
or whether it is they want this thing and they want it hard all day that that is some of the most fun hunting guys and i've i've had those days you will have those days if you go out this season you have those days where every i mean just the harder you call the more they want to come in so good luck guys um and enjoy the time before the season opens you know um right now i'm, I'm enjoying not waking up at 3 a.m in the morning so um but pretty soon we're gonna be out there and uh, i'll see you in the sweat line too okay adios everyone